Hello, welcome back. Welcome to part two of component testing using a multimeter. Now, as we mentioned in part one of component testing, we've broken down the electrical components inside the appliance into three types. What we're going to look at today are the components that communicate. So as examples, I've got thermistors, I've got Hall effect sensors, I have water turbines and I've got printed circuit boards. Because I'm working from home in lockdown, I don't have an awful lot of components around me. So on the table here, I have a small example of components that, that communicate. I have look the printed circuit board from a boiler. I've got this component which communicates, which is called a Hall effect sensor. And then I've got a little selection here of thermistors, which are also communicators. These components are what I'm going to use to demonstrate and explain about testing components that communicate using our multimeter. And the first components type within this that I'm going to look at I'm going to look at testing thermistors. Now when it comes to thermistors which are used inside boilers, then what you have are two types. So when we think about the thermistor, they are the temperature sensors. The thermistor is measuring a temperature, it's going to communicate to the PCB what that temperature is, and it does that using ohms resistance. And as the temperature changes, the resistance value will also change. So wherever the thermistor is connected inside the boiler, whether it's on the hot water temperature sensing, whether it's on the primary flow, or even maybe on the return to the heat exchanger, wherever the component is connected inside the boiler, the printed circuit board now knows the temperature that it believes is traveling in any one of those positions. What the printed circuit board does, it compares the actual temperature to the temperature that's been selected on the front of the control panel, which is commonly called a set point. So thermistors are measuring temperature, communicating in ohms resistance. The two types are NTC, which is negative temperature coefficient, and for that type of thermistor, then as the temperature goes up, the resistance value goes down. Whereas there is another type of thermistor, which is known as a PTC, that stands for positive temperature coefficient, and in that type of thermistor, as the temperature goes up, the resistance value also goes up. So when you're going to test a thermistor with a multimeter, you need to know what type of thermistor is installed in the boiler. Is it an NTC? Is it a PTC? You may be needing to refer to the manufacturer's instructions. You may be needing to make a call to the technical helpline for the boiler manufacturer. But if I said this, the vast majority of current production boilers use NTCs. So what you're going to need is the information that shows you the performance of the thermistors. On my chart here, this is the chart which shows the performance of the thermistors in the boilers that we currently use. So if I hold that up to the screen, hopefully you can see there are two columns. One column shows a temperature and the other column shows you a resistance value. So you can see this relates to an NTC and as the temperature is increasing, the resistance value is decreasing. This is the information that would be relevant to our Baxi boilers. So how do we test the thermistor? It needs to be disconnected. So on the table here, look, is a thermistor. This particular thermistor is out of the old Baxi Solar. We want to measure resistance. 
So I have selected on my multimeter there, ohms resistance. If I put this in a position where you can see the screen, if I now make contact here, I have now have a resistance value. We know it's in thousands. Whoops, steady on. We know it's in thousands because if we look adjacent to the numbers, we can see a letter K before the ohm symbol. So at the moment, I'm measuring 12,900 ohms. I could then look at this chart and I would go, I don't need to be dead on plus or minus 10%. I would go up here, 12,000 something ohms. That is telling me this the mister believes it's measuring 20 degrees C. And I would say for this tabletop, that's pretty much what the tabletop is. So that's how we use the multimeter. But the misters come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. Look, here's a thermistor out of a boiler. You've got to try and get your multimeter probes onto those two little pins. There's metal pins in there, which is very difficult to see. Here's another thermistor doing exactly the same look. Here's perhaps a more modern thermistor look because it's clipped on. Any one of those thermistors and others, we would use the multimeter in the same way. And we're going to need reference, remember, to the appropriate chart for the appliance that we're working on. Not all boiler manufacturers use the same calibration. So if you were working on a Worcester boiler, for example, then you would need the information from Worcester as to what resistance value they would expect given for any particular temperature. So measuring thermistors can be quite fiddly. And for that reason, it's worth me highlighting that in certain circumstances, it is easier to leave the component connected inside the appliance and then follow the wiring harness back to the printed circuit board. Carefully pull this plug off the board. And then when you look at the plug, you can see in both sides of this plug, there's openings so for each of the electrical connections, you have a little gap where you can then get your multimeter probes in. Far easier than struggling at the component. So I can now put this plug on the table here. And if I get my multimeter probes in there, then I'm measuring a resistance value. Just as before, I would then look at the chart and see the value and then find out what temperature this particular thermistor thinks it's at. There is a benefit to doing it like this. The benefit is, as well as measuring the thermistor value, we are also confirming the integrity of the wiring harness. We know the wires are good. Now what some guys do for convenience is that they keep in their toolkit, if they're taking out an old boiler, they cut these wires and on there they put a little terminal strip with two connectors so that when they're fault finding, they can simply put their little adapter on with the terminal strip and then into the terminal strip they can get with these little probes to easily measure the thermistor value and once again compare it to the chart. So that's the misters. Another example of a component that communicates is this look. This is a Hall effect sensor. And inside lots of boilers, the Hall effect sensor is the electrical component used that's going to tell the printed circuit board whether there is a hot water demand. Now this works. It's similar to a switch, but you cannot test it as a switch. If this was technically a switch, then I could test it as I did with the other switches with continuity. But this doesn't. This has a little printed circuit board and the Hall effect sensor is simply this. If there is a magnetic field adjacent to the Hall effect sensor, that's that little bit inside here, then the effect of the magnetic field 
disturbs where the voltage is going to go. It pushes it away. So inside a boiler, the Hall effect sensor is going to be connected to a cable. Look, and if you look at this, you can see connected to this Hall effect sensor, there is a harness with three different coloured wires. Think about it as simple as this. Delivered up here to the Hall effect sensor down one of those wires is a low voltage DC. Depending upon whether there is a hot water demand or not, there is a low voltage returning back to the PCB down one wire or the other wire, depending if there is a demand or not. So with our multimeter set to measure volts DC, in accordance with the instructions provided from the manufacturer, we could confirm whether there is the right voltage measured depending upon is the hot tap running or not. So there's a couple of examples of components that communicate. This is a component that communicates. However, you and I using this, I don't believe, unless you previously worked in the electronics industry and you understand all of these components and what they do and how you recognize their values, me and you are not gonna check the components on a printed circuit board. We can do the obvious simple stuff. We can give it a right old look and see if there's any scorch marks or burning. We could also look to see, hmm, maybe I flooded it while I was taking out the plate heat exchanger. But when it comes to electrically testing, what we can do with this, once we understand how all the other electrical components work, then we could measure on all of these terminals around the board, we can confirm is it either receiving the correct information from a various component, for example a thermistor, and is it giving out the correct information, for example a voltage to drive the fan, the pump, the gas valve, the diverter valve. So we would be fault finding what we would call around the board. So that's all for this session, components that communicate. Part two, remember, in part three, we are going to look at the working components and how we would use these. So thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed and found it useful.